Hi, thanks for joining me. I'm Amanda of inspiringinking.com. Welcome to my craft room. In today's video, we're going to be making this cute little bag. It's designed to hold a three inch square cards, but it's a really useful size for all different sorts of gifting. So let's get started, shall we? First up, you will need a piece of cardstock that measures four inches by 12 inches. And we, I'm just gonna get my scoreboard in. And what you're going to do is you're going to score it at four and a half, five and a half, and 10 inches. Now the fab thing about this size is you can get three out of a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. Now Stamping Up have just released some uh, single colours of 12 inch cardstock in the autumn winter catalogue. Now I'm thrilled about that, my scrapbookers are thrilled about that and anyone making 3D items is thrilled. So I needed to go and buy lots of it so we can keep those items in the catalogue. Okay, so this, like I said, four inches by 12 inches, scored at four and a half and five and a half, and then 10, and that is it, nearly it. That's the wraparound piece. Then we've got this piece, okay, so this is the box inside. So this piece measures five and a half by five inches and we're going to score at one and at four and a half and that's across the five and a half inch piece and then turn it around so the five inch is at the top and you're going to score at two and at three so really that is all the scoring so I can get rid of my scoreboard now now don't worry if you haven't got the measurements down if you are on YouTube and you look down below this video, you'll be able to see um, all the measurements. There'll also be a link to the project directly on my blog, so all the, the measurements are there as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just reinforce these score lines. So I'm just gonna fold that over. My grid paper is dancing around today. All right, so let's do that. Okay. Um, then I'm just going to punch this little bit out here. So that's the one and three eighths punch. Just means it's easier to get the things in and out. Okay, so that's that one. I kind of guess it would have helped had I shown you the inside first. I was so eager to get started. So <laughs> let me show you the inside. So this flap lifts up like this and it's got a magnet and then this flap folds down. So you can see that's where the semicircle that I've just cut out there and inside, like I said, I've got these cute little three inch cards. We'll come back to those in a little while. But that's what it looks like on the inside. If I take the cards out, you'll be able to see there, look, there's plenty of space for you to be able to um, put other gifts in it. Okay, so Tombow, scissors, and patterned paper. Okay, right, I just need to turn this grid paper over. For some reason it was on centimetres. That didn't work. In centimetres, I work in inches. So, this piece of patterned paper is three and three quarters by four and a quarter. And this piece is one and three quarters by three and three quarters. Okay, so that is all fine. So, what you're going to do is just make sure that you put the patterned paper on the right section. So this is this is the front, the front piece of the box, and that flat piece goes over there. So I'm just going to pop that on. So 
So it's just going to have a little quarter of an inch gap all the way around. And then the same on this piece as well. Now I'm using all of the 2015, 2017 in colors. Um, so as a, like a little suite of products. So look there, they all are. And uh, with all of Stampin' Up's products, all the colors um, are designed to coordinate together. So in a color family, you've always got colors that you can pick two or three colors out of a color family and they'll work together. So certainly that is the same with this color family, this, this um, in colors. So these five all work beautifully together. So let me move those out of the way. So that's the front piece of the box. Then all we're going to do to make the inner is just cut these two sections here. So you can see it's just the, those flaps. And what I'm actually going to do is just take a triangle or a sliver off there, off both sides. And then when I fold the box in, it just gives it a little bit more room and allows it to fold a bit neater. Okay. So I'm just going to put glue on there and on there. And then I'm bringing the back up on those two sides, hopefully you'll be able to see that, because this front section here will actually be seen. So I want that to wrap round. So I want that piece to wrap around like that. So then I'm just going to put glue on there, and glue on there. So then this piece goes into the wrap. Now, first up, I'm going to put the base down. And this will just take a second because what I actually want to do is make sure it's, it's stuck well. So let's just see. Give it a good press. Now Tombow, Tombow does um, stick really quickly. Um, but it is a wet glue, so you just have to give it a second or two just to kind of stick. And then I'm just going to fold this back a little bit and put Tombow on the, the back of this. And then this is going to fold down and fold flat. It's kind of difficult for you to see. There you go. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. So it's actually sticking on this section here. You know what I've not done? I've not put the magnet in. Ah. Okay, so <laughs> let's see if I can rescue this. This is real crafting. So, you know, let me show you. Right, this is really not what you wanna do, but it'll work, trust me. Okay, so magnet. These are super cool magnets, but they are really, really strong. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'll put a link to where I buy them. I buy them on eBay. Um, and you have two magnets, but they're a special type of magnet. And it's got a weird name beginning with N that I couldn't pronounce even if I tried. So you just need two of these little magnets and I'll just put one on the table and I'm going to use a glue dot. Okay. And I'm going to put that in the middle there and then I'm going to put Tombow back on the piece I've just torn off. Nobody will know, honestly. Please leave in the comments. Has this happened to you? You make something and think, oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. Well, there you go. Look, nobody would ever know. See, 
Nobody would ever know. Okay, so one magnet is inside. Now, if you just take this magnet here, honestly, it will snap on there really well, really quickly. Okay, so now you've got the magnet attached so that the two bits that need to snap together are together. Then you're going to put a glue dot on the top and then you're going to fold down the flap, press it hard and then the magnet with the glue dot will be in exactly the right place. Okay, now you need to get a punched out piece. Again, this is a Watermelon Wonder. And just put a glue dot on the top of there. And there we go. And then I'm just gonna sort of curve it around and be able to see, look, just pop that down. And it works really, really well. Nobody can see the magnet, but it's there. Okay, so the box, ooh, the box is done, almost. Quick bit of de decoration on there. So I am going to use Tip Top Taupe. This is a flower shop and the matching pansy punch love this stamp set you need to make sure when you get this stamp set that you need to line up the punch it's not symmetrical um, so you need to make sure that you know which way is up on your stamps and that's what all my red lines are for so I'm just gonna stamp that punch it out the way somewhere on my desk. Ah, I have some rhinestones. I do, honestly. Hmm, maybe not. Okay, so what I will do, I'll just put a dimensional on there. And then, so pop that down. Probably here somewhere. Nah, there you go. And then pop a rhinestone on the top. Okay, so there you go. So there are two variations of, of the same box. Now, if you wanted to make the cards that, that go inside, I'm not actually going to go kind of go through it all, but I am just going to give you a few hints and tips. Okay, so there are the five cards. Now, to make the cards, the easiest way to do it is to use Whisper White 12 by 12 cardstock because each one of these is three inches, three inches that way by six inches that way. So um, you can get, I don't know, eight. Yeah, eight out of a 12 by 12 sheet. There's no wastage then, it's, it's really straightforward. Um, for you to for you to do that and I've used the in color DSP to match it's a, a color stack you get 40 sheets and um, it's 20 pounds so that's a, a real bargain now unfortunately we don't have these envelopes anymore they left the the catalog um, last June now I love this size of envelopes and I have a secret stash, <laughs> which is why I have used them. So I wanted to show you a way round, if you haven't got a secret stash like me, to use the envelope punch board really quickly because there is matching envelope paper. Um, and it's super cool, look at this. It's so cool. So it's envelope paper. now. What I'm going to su su uh, suggest is there are 20 sheets in here and there's two patterns. 
so they're they're all solid on one side and then there's spots and then there's this sort of arrow pattern which is is really lovely so there's 20 sheets so there's four sheets of each of the five colors yep that makes 20. so if you bought the envelope paper rather than the dsp stack you could do your envelopes and decorate your bags as well so that's another option for you but this envelope paper is really cool so i'm just going to make an envelope that's going to go with this card so i can just show you how quick and easy it is and the, the envelope punch board is amazing um, I've already done some videos on it, but you can make bags and boxes and all sorts of wonderful things. So it's not just for envelopes, but it does envelopes really well. So if you've not come across it before, there's a scoreboard, a scoring tool. Um, this is your scoring line. Uh, this is the punch, and I'll explain about the reverse punch in a minute. You look on this chart here, to work out which size your card is and we're working on a three inch by three inch card so i need five and a quarter inch square piece of paper here's one i've prepared, prepared earlier and we're going to score at two and five eighths of an inch now the score lines are all up here now the brilliant thing about the envelope board is that you you measure once and then you just follow the score lines. You don't have to keep measuring and turning and, and moving around. So yeah, it's a really cool tool. So two and five eighths, always punch first and score. And then you've got this brilliant score line. So turn your score line round and can you see this little beaky bit here? Pop it in and punch and score again. And again, so remember, measure once and then just follow the score lines. So punch and score. Okay, so that is your envelope base. And there's some little bits there. And then this side is a corner rounder. So you just put it in. Look, gives this really fantastic edge to your corners of your envelope okay so there we go use the score tool just to reinforce those score lines now you can have spots on the outside or spots on the inside the way I make my envelopes is I always fold these two pieces in first, of course I use Tombow, put a little bit of Tombow on there and then just pop it down there like that and then pop that piece up. Now if uh, the card that you're making is quite dimensional, do pop it inside the card before you glue it. That way you can you can get a little bit of flex. But look how cute is that envelope? And just to show you, let's just put it pop it inside here. Look, it'll just pop inside there like that. Perfect. Okay. So let's just pop all of these things. So these are the two two cases. This is super cute handmade envelope. And then those are the other cards. And basically all of these cards I've just used the matching colors. It's a three inch square and um, the DSP is two and five eighths. No, what am I talking about? It's two and, <laughs> it's two and three quarters of an inch. Goodness me, I'm, <laughs> I'm really sorry. <sighs> okay, shall we just try that last little bit again? Okay, so cards are three inches square. So the pattern paper, the DSP is two and three quarters of an inch. 
Okay, with that, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining me on my video today. Do uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That means you'll be the first to know when I've got some new videos. Check out my blog, www.inspiringinkin.com. Thank you so much for joining me. Goodbye.